Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys a couple of DIY high-end dupes. Y'all know I love a good look for less, so if I feel like I can DIY a piece, I definitely try to give it a go. So I'm excited to share those with you guys today. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Noelle, I make new videos like this every single week on home decor and DIY and thrifting and showing you guys how to get the high-looking home you want at a price point that you can afford. So if you're interested in that, Definitely consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to turn on your notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my upcoming videos. Before we jump in, I wanted to give a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. So let's go ahead and get into these DIYs. So for this first DIY project, I'm going to be duping this $90 paper mache vase from McGee & Co. And I'm going to be using this glass vase, a bowl and mixing spatula, warm water, a small circular lid, and this fast drying paper mache. So I'm just starting out by mixing up my paper mache and I always use a scoop instead of pouring it directly into the bowl because the dust really flies everywhere. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of water at a time. mixing it up until it gets to be similar consistency to like cookie dough. Next, I'm going to rub this coconut oil all over the vase so that the paper mache will come off of the mold more easily whenever it's dried. Once I had it all oiled up, I started adding the paper mache to the top and flattened it down to the sides as well. You don't have to worry about getting it completely smooth at first, you're just trying to get it covered. And I noticed that the paper mache was sliding down the side of the vase, so I just went back and filled in those places. And once it was covered all the way down to the bottom, it didn't slide around anymore. So then I just went around the vase and smoothed out the paper mache. And it's actually a little bit easier to smooth out after it's been mixed for a while because it's not going to be as tacky. Next up, I'm making the handles for the sides of this vase. So I'm just taking a ball of paper mache and flattening out to be about a fourth of an inch thick. And then I'm using this lid to cut the circle down so that it's more even around the edges and it'll make each handle size more consistent. Then I'm scooping out a little bit of the center to create that hole in the middle. And then smoothing that out as well. I also smoothed out one of the sides of the circle so that I can easily attach it to the vase more seamlessly. Then I just repeated that for the other three handles and let the vase and handles dry overnight. Once it was dry, I tried to remove the glass vase from the paper mache and it did not go very well. I actually ended up breaking the glass vase on the inside, so I just left it inside of the paper mache since I didn't want to risk breaking the paper mache vase. So next, I just went ahead and sanded down the handles to smooth them out a little more. And I'm using 120 grit sandpaper here. Then I mixed up a little bit more paper mache and I'm taking that paper mache and putting a little bit of it on that flat side that we created earlier and then pressing it into the side of the vase, making sure that it's centered. Then I'm just smoothing it into the vase so that it connects really seamlessly. I also used this little painter's knife to get into the small areas and really smooth it out. And once the handles are dry, the vase is ready to style. I had a little bit more paper mache left over, so I thought it would be fun to dupe this little footed paper mache bowl. So I used this plastic guacamole bowl that I had on hand as a mold, 
and I just started to cover it in the paper mache mix. Once it was completely covered, I was able to smooth it out more and really start building up those little feet. So I just shaped them into these little triangles on the top and smoothed them into the rest of the bowl. The inspiration bowl has this rim around the top. So I'm going around and adding more paper mache around the top and then going around and smoothing it out to create that rim look. And then just left that to dry. Once it was dry, I popped out the mold and then let the inside dry as well. Then it was time to add some color. So I used this black paint and just put that into a cup and then mixed in some water to create more of a wash because I wanted the bowl to look more tinted instead of like a really opaque layer of paint. So I tested that out on the inside and then added a little bit more water to dilute it down some more and then applied it all over the bowl. And that finishes off this little fitted paper mache bowl. Before we get into the next DIY, I want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes to help you get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in an impactful way. If you have a new skill that you are trying to learn, Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography to illustration to interior design and painting and so much more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. I love that Skillshare has so many types of courses, so there's something for everyone here. And I'm really loving this iPhone photography course by Del McManus, where he actually teaches you how to take professional looking photos just using your iPhone camera. And it has been super helpful for whenever I need a quick photo for my Instagram feed and don't have time to set up my mirrorless camera, but I'm still able to capture really beautiful photos using just my iPhone. And Skillshare is actually offering the first thousand people who sign up using the link in my description box below a one month free trial of Skillshare. So be sure to go and check that out. You will not regret it and will learn so many new skills. Next up, I'm going to be duping this beautiful eucalyptus tree from Pottery Barn. I actually had this tree that got zapped by the frost and died. So I'm just going to be using it as my base but you could use any tree limb. I found these eucalyptus stems at Hobby Lobby and got them at half price for $7.50 each and got three of them and they are so, so pretty. So I just started by snipping off a branch from the stem and figured out where I wanted it to go. Then I'm taking a drill with a bit that's just slightly larger than the wire and drilling a hole in that spot. Next, I'm adding a little bit of hot glue to the end of that stem and then placing it down into that hole that we drilled. I'm also making sure to pull back some of that wire cover so that the wire is exposed. And then once I place it in the tree, I use that part that I pulled back to then blend it down into the branch of the tree stem. So I just continued this process all around the tree, sticking in the stems where a branch would naturally grow from on those little knobby parts. And I made sure to place branches at the back as well so that it would be really well rounded. And that finishes off this faux eucalyptus tree.
I love small decor accent pieces, so next we are going to be duping these sandstone beads from McGee & Co. They have a really cool texture to them, and so I am going to be using these bead strands that I already had on hand but didn't really like the colors of. And then I'm using this stone texture spray paint. So to keep the paint off of the jute tassels, I'm wrapping some masking tape around it and then doing the same thing on the other end as well. For me, the easiest way to paint beads is to hang them up. So I just attach some thread at the ends using some more masking tape and then hung them up outside. And I'll have some similar beads like this linked below for you guys. I realized later that I probably should have painted this an off-white color to start with, but I just went with the stone texture spray and it, it didn't have as much coverage as I thought that it would. So I had to let it dry in between coats and really just build it up. So once I got mine mostly covered, I went in with a off-white spray paint to get the little places that the texture spray didn't cover. And then once that's dried, that finished off these easy stone bead garland. Okay guys, I hope that you all enjoyed this video and are able to recreate some of these pieces for your own homes. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite piece was or if you're going to be trying any of these things out and let me know if you have any questions or anything like that as well. Don't forget before you go to check out the link in the description box below to get your free one month trial of Skillshare. You will not regret it and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!